The human brain is a funny thing. No, I'm not going to cook one, I'm just going to talk about it for a few seconds. Because you see, I have very few memories of my early childhood, but occasionally, just for no apparent reason, my weird little brain will start throwing out memories from when I was really young. And recently, I remembered my mum doing something for a bake sale when I was in preschool. And for the love of God, I honestly thought this was just something that came out of my brain and wasn't actually real. But it was, because it kept coming back to me and I ended up doing some research online to see if this was actually a real thing. And surprise of all surprises, it was. So out of nostalgia, I wanted to try and make it for myself. So today I present to you my mum's beautiful marshmallow cones on the One Pot Chef. First things first, we're going to work on our marshmallow mixture. Now, we're going to be making marshmallow from scratch today instead of using store-bought ones and trying to melt them down because, frankly, you don't get the right consistency with store-bought marshmallows, but when you make it from scratch, which is actually quite easy to do, it comes out a lot better. So, first things first, we've got a medium-sized pan. Now, I recommend using something larger than you would intend to use for making something like this simply because this sugar mixture has a tendency to boil up and if you use a smaller pot or a smaller pan it can actually boil over the sides and apart from being very dangerous because it's very hot sugar it's an absolute bugger to clean up so go for something slightly larger we're going to add in our first ingredient which is one cup of plain regular white sugar I'm also adding in one tablespoon of plain unflavoured gelatin powder and three quarters of a cup, 150 millilitres of water. Now this is just regular room temperature water, not boiling or hot or anything like that. And what we're going to do is just quickly stir that together until everything is combined. Now over a medium heat, we're just going to continue to stir this until the sugar and the gelatin have completely dissolved and when this mixture starts to boil that's your cue to stop stirring. Just gently stir it and you'll know the sugar is starting to dissolve because it won't feel gritty when you're scraping the spoon across the bottom of the pan and you'll start to feel the mixture starting to thicken up that's the gelatin starting to kick in. Now when working with superheated sugar the big rule is gentle and don't do anything silly because superheated sugar, when it's superheated, it can be almost twice as hot as boiling water, sometimes even hotter. And if you splash yourself with it, if you're crazy enough to try and taste it while it's boiling, you will leave yourself with incredibly painful burns, like way more painful than if you stick your hand into boiling water. This sort of reaches the temperature of oil in a deep fat fryer so be very careful <laughs> stand away from it if possible use a nice long spoon like i'm using and just gently does it don't go splashing it about all over the place and whipping it up into a frenzy just gentle easy do it so it does it don't go too crazy you can see that mixture is now boiling, so we've stopped stirring. Now all we need to do is reduce the temperature down, just keep it bringing it lower until it's still simmering away, but we don't want it to be furiously boiling. We just want it to be simmering away, and we're going to leave it to simmer for approximately 10 minutes. While our mixture is boiling, I thought I'd take this opportunity to remind you to check out my social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Links in the video description underneath this video on YouTube. And speaking of YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it. That way you won't miss out on any of my new videos. After 10 minutes of simmering, you can see that our mixture is no longer cloudy. It's actually gone clear. So that's that done. All we need to do is turn off the heat and take the pot completely off the heat. And we're going to allow it to stand for about 10 minutes to allow the mixture to cool. 10 minutes later, our mixture has cooled. So we're just going to transfer it into a large mixing bowl or into the bowl of a stand mixer. Now, looking at this, you're probably thinking, this doesn't look like a lot of mixture. What is this going to make? Well, 
trust me, this is going to make heaps of marshmallow because what we're going to do is we're going to beat this with an electric hand mixer or in a stand mixer, whichever you happen to have. And when we do that, we're going to be beating air into the mixture, which is going to increase its volume. It's going to make it go that lovely white fluffy marshmallow color. It's going to make it thick. It's going to make it amazing. Now, before we do that, we're just going to add in our final ingredients. Firstly, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And the last ingredient is optional. Now, you can add in a couple of drops of food coloring at this point, if you don't want white marshmallows, if you'd prefer to make your marshmallow pink or green or whatever color you like, add a few drops of color in now. Otherwise, we are ready to beat this. Now, we're gonna be beating this for approximately 10 minutes or until the mixture is thick and white and voluminous and looking great, or whatever color you choose to make it. It's, I've got mine's gonna be white because I like being basic. So we're just gonna beat this up now. And look how much that's pumped up looking absolutely gorgeous and look how thick that marshmallow mixture is look at that lovely next we've got some flat bottomed ice cream cones and that's what we're going to be serving our marshmallow mixture in now all we need to do is just spoon the mixture into each of the cones making sure you're filling the bottom of each cone so poke it down and just mound it on top once it's full if you want to be fancy, you can use a piping bag for this, but to be honest, I'm not that fancy. Now, when it comes to decorating, you can do whatever you like. I'm just using a few sprinkles on top, like so, but feel free to do whatever you like with it. And then just continue on with the rest. Once filled and decorated, we can set aside our cones for about maybe an hour or two, just until the marshmallow has firmed up and set. You can also pop them into the fridge if it's a particularly hot day, and this will help them to firm up too. This mixture made between eight and 10 cones, depending on how big the ice cream cones you use are, how much you fill them and how much you dome on top. If instead of doming it on top, you just make them flat, you can easily get an extra three or four cones out of this. Um, I made these pretty quickly. They're fairly easy to do. There's not that much work involved, but boy, they really come out looking impressive. They're gonna be great for kids' birthday parties, doing for bake sales for school or in preschool. These are just so much fun and they really have this whimsical quality to them that I just think is absolutely beautiful. How cool do these look, honestly? Now, I haven't left these to set for as long as I probably should have, but I wanted to have a big taste because honestly, ever since I remembered this thing a couple of weeks ago, I have just been dying to try this. So here goes nothing. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> How cool is that? It looks just like ice cream, but it's marshmallow and it, mmm. Funny thing is, this is my first tasting of it and it actually tastes exactly as I remember it all the way back in the early 1980s. <laughs> it is really disturbing that my brain can remember that, but I can't remember when I'm supposed to go to an appointment or when I've got a phone call I've got to do with someone. But this stuck in my brain for God knows how many years, who knows why. Well, those are absolutely amazing. It's beautiful, fluffy, thick, You've got that wonderful vanilla flavor to it. And you can do so many things with this. You can change the color up for various things. If you're doing like say a kid's party, you could do this pink or blue marshmallow. If you're doing a Halloween party, you could make it green. You can change the decorations. You could use different colored sprinkles. You could use edible glitter. You could do all sorts of stuff with this. Use your imagination. Well, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Check out my other videos at onepotchefshow.com. And until next time, see you later. I had actually convinced myself that this memory of preschool was just something that my brain had put together in itself and it wasn't actually a real memory. It wasn't until I did a bit of Googling and I actually found multiple recipes for this that I've never seen this anywhere else. So it must be something that's either popular in other parts of the world or something that's just gone out of fashion here in Australia. I'm not quite sure, but 
How familiar are you with these? Have you seen these? Have you had these on a regular basis? Let me know in the comments section. How do you make them? Do you make them for specific occasions or do you do certain kinds of decorations? I'd love to hear about it. So let me know in the comments. All right, guys, lots of love to you all and I shall see you next time.